the real-time API is really great in that it enables realistic conversation, but it's not going to be very useful in a smart home system if it can't do things like controlling the lights or getting the current weather. So I want to touch on a feature of many LLMs that's going to solve the problem for us, which is called function calling. Function calling allows you to make data available from other systems or to execute actions on other systems by providing something called tools that your model can interact with. A basic example would be checking the weather. So the real-time API doesn't actually know what the current weather is. It's just able to generate these text sequences for you. So if you use the real-time API raw without providing the weather tool, it will either tell you it doesn't know the weather or it will just make up a response. But if you provide a function like get weather, it will actually tell you when it needs the weather and you can go fetch the weather from an external source and provide it back to the model so it can keep interacting with the user. The real-time API can't actually execute this code for you. It just generates the function call. So if I ask, what's the weather in San Francisco? It will actually generate the function call, get weather San Francisco. But then I have to write the code that actually goes and fetches that information from something like weather.com and then pulls that information back into the real-time API. Then once the tool response is provided, the API will respond in a natural language way. So by combining the features of the speech-to-speech -speech real time API with the function calling, you're going to be able to provide real information that's usable to the user. So let's try this out in the real time playground. I'm back here in the real time playground. And what I wanted to do now is show you how function calling works. So I'm going to go to this section functions and click add, and I'll use this really handy generate feature to generate two functions. So the first one I want to generate is getting the current weather. So OpenAI will go generate this function, which it has decided to call get current weather. And it takes in a couple of parameters. The first is the location. I think that's very important. The second is the unit. So Celsius or Fahrenheit or metric or imperial in this case. And then the third is the language of the response. So I'm also going to click this checkbox for respond with automatically generated output. In your actual production use case, when the API makes a function call, you have to write the script and on your own server or device, actually go out, make the request to get that information and provide it back to the API. But for continuity sake, so you can see how this would work in practice, I'm going to have OpenAI automatically generate a response here so that you can feel what it's like. So we have one new tool call available here, get current weather, and I'm going to add one more, get the weather forecast for a particular location. So we got this new function, get weather forecast, and it has a few properties. So the first is location, and the second is gonna be date. The third is units, metric or imperial, and the fourth is a forecast type. When you create your own functions, you can certainly customize these, uh, write them from scratch even. They don't necessarily have to have this many parameters, but we'll just go with what OpenAI suggests here for ease. So I'm going to save that. And now we have two tools available to be called. I also edited the prompt here and I removed the bit about making up the weather response. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start my session and show how the tool calls would work in practice. Hey, what's the weather right now in San Francisco? It's currently 68 degrees Fahrenheit and partly cloudy in San Francisco. The humidity is at 72%. So your hair might be doing its own interpretive dance gotcha. right now. Gotcha. Do you think it's better for me to be bring a sweater or a jacket with me? Even that it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit and partly cloudy, I'd say a sweater should do the trick. But if you tend to be on the chilly side or plan on staying out after the sun sets, a jacket might be a safer bet. 
Hey, Plus, so I'm also going to New York City this weekend. Can you tell me what the weather there is going to be like on Sunday? I'm wondering if I need to bring a heavy jacket or not. On Sunday in New York City, you can expect a high of 55 degrees Fahrenheit and a low of 41 degrees Fahrenheit with partly cloudy skies. There's a small 10% chance of that's going to be pretty cold. I definitely want to bring a jacket and a sweater in that case. Great idea. You can layer up with the sweater and then add the. Okay, so we can see the function calls were generated. The first one was getting the current weather and it generated a response. Uh, but this is where we would actually write code to go request from a, an API like the weather.com API and then provide that information back to the model. And you can also see we had our tool call get weather forecast. It called the weather forecast for a particular date in the future. And it responded with some information about what the weather is going to be like. And then the model interpreted that information with information about whether I should bring a heavy jacket or a sweater. So function calling is quite a useful feature. And I'd say it's actually totally necessary for the purpose of building a smart speaker because otherwise it's just going to be something that you can talk to and it's not going to be very useful. So getting the current weather and getting the forecast are examples of two tools that we could bring in to start to bring this device up to parity with something like the Echo. And here are some other tool ideas that we might build to make this project more usable. We might be able to make a tool call to an internal clock and timer so that we can set timers and set alarms. We might be able to trigger an external system like Home Assistant to adjust our lighting. We might be able to work with a music streaming service like Spotify to start playing music. We might use a simple RAG approach to maintain a grocery list or a to-do list. These are all examples of possibilities that we'll explore in future videos in this series once we've started to lay the groundwork for implementing the real-time API on our device, adding these tools is going to really enhance the functionality here.